I had a currency collection come in the shop, and there's some large notes in here and some kind of rare notes that you don't want to miss. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to share these with you, and I'm going to show you how I appraise these. So let's get started. But first, here's my website, PorchmouthCoinShop.com. Currently, we have 5% off everything except our 10th ounce gold equals. Everything else is 5% off. It's applied automatically at checkout. You don't have to do a thing. Just place your order, go through checkout, and 5% will be deducted from your order total. It's a way of saying thank you to everybody who has supported this business. So take advantage of it. Go over to PorchmanCoinShop.com. So here we have these currency notes that I purchased. These came in. Don't see some of these very often. I have had the 35 Hawaii notes before. This note is not in very good condition at all. It's missing pieces. It's stained. It's really a rough looking note. I paid $5 for it. He said that he paid 10 to 15 and I told him $10 is probably be about right. It's tops. And I told him maybe I have to sell it for less, maybe even throw it up at an auction and just let people bid what they want for it. A 15 would be really pushing it, I think, on this one. And then we had your run-of-the-mill silver certificates, uh, pretty much in the $2 range on these. There's a star note, a 35, 35E. Um, they're, they're just normal. They made millions of these. I mean, literally printed millions of these. So even though they're cool and they're star, silver certificates and one of them is a star note, they're not extremely rare in this condition. If this was uncirculated, it'd be a little different. But like I said, they're worth anywhere from uh, $3, sometimes $4. A star note's a little bit more, maybe five. And this one here is a 1934, and they call it, it's kind of like a funny back, like play money. Um, this one, I'm going to pay around, you know, $15 for this one. I think that it's a $20 or it's a $25 note, maybe. Like I said, when I do research on these, and I have a huge Apple computer up front with a large screen, a 27-inch screen. And what I do is I... Just let people see when I look up on eBay and make an offer. And I say, look, this is what it sold for. And I basically go with the buy it nows instead of the auctions. And I'm as fair as possible. One. Well, that's why they call it this the funny buck back, by the way, because this kind of looks like funny money on the back. But that's how I do it. So there's complete transparency in what I'm offering. You don't have to accept my offer. And here's some more. But at least one thing, they know exactly how I do things here. So these are normal silver certificates, but they're 1957, so they're even more common than the 35s, or at least less desirable. But they're still about the same price. They're within a couple dollars and up on these in this condition. Then we have a $1 silver certificate, and it has the uh, brown seal, orange seal, whatever you want to call it. It's the North Africa issue. Similar to the Hawaii issue, sim issued for the same reason during wartime. So if, you know, an area got took over, then I could say anything with that seal on it is no longer U.S. money or worth anything. So these are really cool, though. I like these. And here's another one. This is a $5 one. Uh, this one here is got a lot of damage on it. Uh, really torn. It's hard to price something like this because of that. So basically with the tape and, and everything on it, I mean, I, I guess in the condition it's in, it's in the $15 range. Uh, and I meant to add the value to this one here because this was um, also the dollar. I paid $30 for this one. And I think that it's a nice, you know, $40, $45 note being in the condition it's in. It might be a little bit more than that, but it has a fold down the middle. So extra fine probably on that one. Then we have a $5 silver certificate and had a few of these, uh, different dates, a 34 and a 53. And, you know, when you're looking at these, you're at 10 bucks, uh, $8. I think they'll go for around the $15 range. This one here, it's hard to pay too much over. It's a 34. It's not really worth a whole lot of a premium, uh, being that it's just a regular Federal Reserve note. But it's worth a little bit over, so I basically pay about eight bucks for them, probably sell them for ten or twelve, something like that. And same thing with the red seal, pretty much the same prices. Just, just there's an example here of each different kinds of notes. Like you have the silver certificates, then you have the red seal U.S. note, 
Then you have the Federal Reserve note is a green, lime green, or whatever seal. Then had a hundred dollar national currency, nineteen twenty nine. This one, it has a real sharp fold down the middle and across it. So I'm putting it close to extra fine forty to very fine uh, thirty five of those. So I went in with at hundred and fifty dollars. It's probably a two hundred dollar note. Then we have, and, and that one's Minneapolis, but it's it, $100 national currencies. It's a small note, but it's still kind of neat to buy these. Then you have a $10, and this is from New York, 1929, national currency as well. These typically sell for $55 to $65, and I usually pay about 40 bucks for these. Here's the reverse, and it's actually got some nice paper quality to this one. Sometimes you can sell them for 65. Sometimes they go for a little bit more. It just depends on uh, what city. I mean, New York's pretty common. So New York, New York, there's a lot of those. Um, if you go to uh, a smaller town and a local person will pay more for these. Sometimes I'll pay $125 for them. You know, it just depends. Like I know some portrait notes in this condition that can sell for that much. Lower serial numbers help too. Then we have the $10. And this is a North Africa as well with the seal on it. You can tell by the seal. And on the $10 one, I'm basically in the $40 range, and it'll probably go for up to $60, something like that. It has some issues in here. I said, I'm always looking for pinholes. You look for folds. You look for stains, which is called foxing. Uh, F-A-U-X-I-N-G, I think that's how you say it, foxing. And basically what it is, it could be mold or just some type of stain. The folds all the way across really hurt it. That's that's the, the crease of death when you see that. That and can knock a AU note down to very fine 35 or even extra fine 40, I should say. But it is a nice note otherwise. But you have to nitpick notes looking for pinholes. You have to do that. So here's some fractional currency all together. You know, I basically paid pretty much $80 for all the fractional currency because they all had some issues. This has got burn holes in it. You can see that. And, you know, if I pay a little too much for some of them and a little less for others, it, it averages out. It cost averages. Then I have this one. It's got uh, missing pieces and some tape on it. So like I said, there's not, not really anything special. They're just neat. Just something to have, something to collect. Now, this one's a little nicer, but still yet, if you can get, you know, 25 to 35 out of this one, you're doing pretty good. But it's a nice condition, that one is. And I have one more, and a 25 cent fractional. It's not in bad condition, but it's been circulated a little bit. It has a little bit of fold there. But overall, what you would expect to see. No missing pieces, no pinholes and burn holes and things like that. Then we get to some larger notes. These are my faves right here. Uh, 1922 gold certificate. I basically paid $125 for this. These can sell for up to $200. I don't think this one's going to be a $200 note. Um, probably more like $175 to $200 in that range. But, man, those folds, it was folded in half very well. I mean, it was <laughs> those folds are just, I mean, it was fold, not just in half. It was actually folded in a, like a little quarter there, it looks like, a little square. But still yet, it's a nice note. Then we have the 1917. And I've shown these before. They are really neat notes as well. Basically, I $60 for it, and I think it's probably an $80, $85 note with the creases that it has. But I still, I like all these large notes. I like the designs, something different to look at. So what we have now is kind of boring. It is boring. Not even kind of, it is. Here's another large note, 1923. I mean, you're looking at the $25. I think it's a $35 note. Might get 40 out of it. it. Does have some nice paper quality, but it has that fold. See, these folds make a big difference when you're looking at these. But it's still, I like the design of it. I like the large notes. Then we have a wood chopper. You always like to get these. They're hard to value whenever they're not graded. This is a $5. And the reason I say that is you don't know if this note's been ironed out, been washed, cleaned, um, you know, basically tampered with a little bit because it looks pretty nice for what it is. But all in all, I paid $300 for it. And I think it's $350 to $400 note. 
So we'll see. Or it's because it's in really good condition for what it is. I it, it's rare. You know. Then we have a two dollar note with, and this is what you call a scalloped. It's a red seal, but it's a scalloped. That's what that is. And this one is a series of 1917, like the one dollar one. And I paid $150 for this, and I think that it can be a $200 note, $200 note to $225. What I did was, like I said, I looked at eBay. Look at eBay, see what they sold for, and I came back off of it, 20 30%, something like that. And what you're going to find when you do that at eBay, you're looking at the sold, buy it nows. Okay, not the bids, because bids are going to be lower. People get good deals on the bids. You want to make sure that you're seeing more than one and trying to go by the average. And sometimes you don't see these for sale. Like there's only two of them. So you try to be as fair as possible. You don't just try to be as fair. I mean, I am as fair as I can be. And a lot of people think when you say you're trying that you're not, you know, but I am. That's what, what I call in my terminology from where I'm from. When you're trying, you're doing it, you know. So anyways, $10 national currency. This is from Trenton, New Jersey. So someone from Trenton, New Jersey would probably pay $350 for this. And me here in Ohio, I'm at $225. So I know that I can get $250 to $300 out of this note. Good condition. We've seen a lot of these. I've got the Portsmouth notes. <laughs> Very similar, just have different uh, signatures and city. Then here we go. An educational note from 1896. I want to take this out because of the reflection on it. It's such a light note. It's in such bad condition. But yet it's still rare enough to command a good value. I wish it was in better condition. And it's possible I might have paid a little more for this than what I should have. But I paid $250 for it. I won't take less than $300 for it. I just won't do it. I think that it's just rare enough even in this condition. You have Martha and you have George on the back. It's a silver certificate. Like I said, it's 1896, so it's it's had a rough life, but it's been preserved now. Then we have a five dollar Federal Reserve note, and I do like these. This is a series of 1914, and I'm at 75 dollars on it. I think that it's a hundred dollar note. It might go for a little more than that, but I was looking at these stains. It's going to depend on the folds and things like that and the person that's wanting to buy it. A lot of times I'll put these up and I'll put a, a you know, kind of a high retail on them and then accept offers. And with the 5% off, I'm not accepting very many offers right now. But those folds are pretty, pretty deep in here. They're pretty obvious. Then here's a couple of graded notes. 1918. This says apparent minor rust stains on back. See, the rust stain, that, that affects the value. It affects... It's hard to find one that's sold that's like that for that price. Or it's hard to find one that has this. You might find the very fine 25, but not with the minor rust stains on back. That can affect the value. It can knock 25 bucks off or $50 off. So I paid $125 for it, hoping that I can get at least $175 to $200 out of it. That's, that's what I'm hoping. But like I said, I'll do a little further research, a little more in-depth research, and make sure that the... Uh, the, the price that I'm asking for, it's fair. And there's the reverse of it. I do like that eagle. Looks has intelligence in the eyes there and the flag. Then we have this one. And this is an 1880 legal tender. It's $1. This is a really nice note. It's choice fine, 15. I think that it looks a little better than 15, but see, that's what you run into. All these folds are so obvious on this, but I honestly think that it's more of a very fine note in my opinion. That's just my opinion on it. I'll stick with it. It, it has a tear, and I think the tear is what caused it. I got it right here. So you have to pay attention to these notes. A lot of times when you get a good deal on a note, it's because it has an issue. Even though it's graded, you need to make sure you know that. So this is how they should be grading coins. Okay, put that it's cleaned on it, but give it a grade. Don't give it a details grade. Just say, hey, it's got a, a cleaning area or a roller mark, but it's going to be you know, very fine 30. And then you can put uh, maybe a minus grade on it. Um, maybe, like I said, Mint State 63 plus. Let's put a Mint State 63 minus, which means it's been it's got a problem. Why not do it that way instead of trashing every clean coin that comes through? Because there's people who would like to buy them, but the thought about a clean coin has become so negative anymore. And I get it, you know, I don't want a clean coin either, but I mean, if it actually had a value and it's graded with a grade, it might be a little more desirable. 
and preserve it from being cleaned more or altered or messed with. So this one here, I paid $200 for it and it's going to go for upwards of $300, 275 in that range. Here's the reverse. It's very similar to the other uh, note, the 1917. So there you have it. Wonderful notes that came in the shop. I hope you enjoyed the share. I ended up paying $1,941 for all these notes. I'm hoping I can at least clear $2,500. Uh, don't try to double my money on this stuff. I mean, you want to pay fair as you can. I mean, who wouldn't like to double your money? But it's just not the way it works sometimes. You know, it's just... Uh, a lot of times you got another way you can double your money is to send some coins off for grading and they come back and they come back the grade you think they are and you take that chance. That, that's about the best way of doing it. You can do it with currency sometimes too. But it's one of those things where it can take months to get those returns. So you try to stay within the 30% range if you can. If you can make a little bit more, that's that's great. You know, and then I'm given discounts and then I'm paying the credit card fee. So it all come it all plays into it. And then only that. I have to take pictures of all these or I have to pay Andy to do it. And then we have to crop them and then we have to put them up on the site. And all that takes time and, and it's a, it takes money to do that. So when you're selling to a coin shop or when you think the dealer's a little low, try to consider that. I mean, you don't have to sell your coins or your currency for something you don't want to sell them for. I get that. That's not what I'm saying here. But do consider that because it is something I take in consideration when I do appraisals. I have to. Um, sometimes uh, it's hard to find values for some of this stuff because not every note's going to look the same. Not every note's folded the same. Not every note's stained the same. Not every note has pinholes. Some do have pinholes. Some have tears. It's all a matter of what that looks like compared to what the, the note sold for that I'm looking online. So thanks for watching my latest video. Please hit that sub button and the bell to get all notifications and have a great day.